the video, I share with you what was the first major decision that will make or break your life. And in this video, which is a part two, let's talk about what is the second major decision that will make or break your life. Okay, so just now the life partner was a heavy topic because it's really important and really critical. Decision number two, your career choice. Essentially, we work 8 to 10 hours of our life a day. You multiply it by 5 times a week, that's 40 hours or more. Can you imagine going to a work that you hate or you dread? And the only thing you think about when you're at work is, when is my work day coming to an end? And when is my weekend coming? Really? Is this the life that you want? You know, I have worked a long time in my life. Since 2006, I started working full-time. So for me, I started work very young. In fact, I stopped asking my parents for money when I was 16 years old. So essentially from 16 years old, I had started earning my own keep. The only things my parents paid for was for my tertiary education. But my education beyond that, my living expenses, I paid for it myself. Uh, even my own master's degree, I also paid for it myself. So I realized that when I first started out working full-time after I graduated from tertiary school, I actually didn't really know what job I want to do. But I know one thing very clear I wanted was I wanted to make money because I'm independent, right? I needed to pay for my own livelihood. So to me, it's, I want to make money. That was my first goal. But I didn't really know what job I want to do. So anyway, I went for interviews and the first job that was offered to me, I took it because I didn't want to waste my time bumping around doing nothing, right? Life is too precious, life is too short and I'm gonna work. And my salary was very low. I started earning a salary of less than $2,000 a month, all right? Singapore dollars. So I was slowly paid. So I know that, mm, this is not working out for me. I needed to earn more money. So next, I thought about, okay, I need to change a job then. And the next job offer came. I earned a little bit more money, but still not enough for me. I believe in my potential and worth much more. And so I took the leap of faith to enter the technology industry. Why? And before I did that, I knew a few things that I wanted. One was, I didn't want to have an income ceiling. I didn't want to be kept how much I could earn. So I wanted something that gives me commission. So the more I work, the more commission that I will have. So what does that mean? It means that I have to be in a sales show. So I looked for a sales role, but I didn't want to be in a retail shop. So I looked for a corporate sales role. And some, during my time, two industries actually gave the most salary. One was the financial industry, one was the technology industry. So for me, when I was younger, I worked in, you know, computer shows. In Singapore, we used to call like Comex shows. So I, to me, is I, had, I already had exposure to the technology industry. And back then, my very first boyfriend, he was a tacky computer geek. So to me, it's, oh, okay, so there'll be some synergy, right? If I were to work in the technology industry, he could help me out, I could help me out since we are in the same tech industry. So yeah, I went to find a corporate sales job in the tech industry. It was a local, small, medium enterprise and I started to earn a little bit more money, of course, because there was commission. But it was still a five-digit income every year. I got greedy. I wanted to earn more because I know that people in the tech industry can easily make six figures a year. So after working about five years in the SME, I was kind of forced out of the job because the company was going to be bankrupt and my bosses was telling me, you know, Melissa, you need to go and find another job already because yeah, things are not turning out well for the company. And as a salesperson, instead of, you know, getting P purchase order, we call it PO, instead of, you know, getting PO from the customer, I had to reject customer's PO because the company couldn't place orders. The company suppliers didn't want to take our orders because our company was essentially owing the suppliers money. So can you imagine a salesperson, your biggest goal is to get PO for the customer, but now you have to tell customer, oh, sorry, sorry, customer, please don't give me a PO. I'm so sorry. Yep. So no choice. I had to find a job. It came to a time when I had a chance to work in a US MNC. And that was a big break in my career because essentially it propelled me to earn six digit a year. To me is wow, from, from a humble background that I can, with my own effort, I can earn six 
figures a year. To me, I had done not too bad, I guess. I had done well. And it was a steep learning curve for me because the culture was different. The way they do things, of course, is very different. So it was a huge learning experience for me. I meet a lot of people. I see how technology company, a big tech giant operates. And I joined at a time when two big brands was forming together to become one company. Somehow, I wanted to learn and see how two big tech giants can become one big company. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime experience you don't get to see, right? But essentially, the point I want to share with you is what, what do you want in your career? Is it the title that you want? Is it the money that you want? Is it the experience that you want? Is it trips? Is it the benefits that you want? Is it the stability that you want? What do you want? So before you go and pick on the next career or job, first understand yourself. What is it that you want in your career? And I can tell you that those rare kinds who can work in a job that you have passion for, that you love, you are really very lucky because the majority of the people in the world never ever find their passion, never ever manage to make a good living out of living their passion. But don't give up because I realized that my passion was developed after I started working in this company. My passion for what I was doing developed. So essentially, I didn't have that passion right from the start, but it grew along with me. So my career advice to you is that if you don't know what is your passion, you have to keep discovering until you know what is your passion or you develop the passion for it. So it's either you discover or you develop the passion for it. And remember that your career choice will essentially make many hours of your day a happy one or an unhappy one. So keep discovering, keep developing your passion for what you want to do in your career. Now the next major decision you need to make in your life, number three, is whether to be a parent or not. So today I'm a parent myself. I have two kids and what essentially they call two under two. So back then when I delivered my second child, my two kids age gap was literally almost two years. It's about 21, 22 months. So essentially this is the hardest, one of the hardest um, time frame because you have, will have two active kids around the same age but also good because they're going to be playing together so anyway let me share with you so i have two other siblings i'm the middle child all right so sometimes when i look at my parents i was thinking i'm so glad that my parents actually gave birth to us because there were times where you know they get to enjoy family time with children and grandchildren. And I was thinking to myself, if I didn't have kids like my parents did, I think my silver years when I'm in my 60s, my 50s, 60s, 70s, I think I might feel quite lonely. There were times when my parents of course had to visit the doctor for the medical appointments and me and my siblings, we would take turns to bring them. And again, I put myself in my parents' shoes. Wow, I'm so glad that, you know, we have siblings to do that for our parents. If, and I put myself in my parents' shoes, if, again, I didn't have kids. You know, I would be visiting the medical appointment, I would be going to my medical appointments alone, or uh, maybe with my spouse. Or what if, touch wood, you know, I'm left all alone in this world. I mean, I may have friends or whatever, but everybody still got their life and not everybody's going to be free. But of course, same thing, your, ch your children may not be free to bring you to the medical appointments, but you have someone to care for you. And at the same time, I thought to myself, when I'm lying down on the bed or on my deathbed, essentially, I'm referring to when I'm on my deathbed, would I have regretted not having children? not having experienced the joys of being a parent, how it feels like to be pregnant, how it feels like to breastfeed my baby, how it feels like to hug a little one, a mini you, every morning but every night before they sleep. I think I would miss out on such joys of life if I didn't have a child or two children. And that is why I decided that I want to have kids because I don't want to be on the deathbed and realize that oh, I had missed out on all these life experiences. 
But I can tell you for sure, it takes a lot of time, effort, love, and also money to raise a little kid. It, you can't escape from that. So it takes a lot of effort to raise a little human being. But for me as a parent, I find that it is all worth it. So what if you have a lot of money, but you do not have someone that you can see grow up? So what if you have lots of time, lots of freedom to go anywhere you want to, but somehow something is just missing? Yeah, that was how I felt. To me, is I feel that, oh, this is my personal opinion, all right? And I find that when you have a kid with your partner, both of you have another common goal to work together. It is like a teamwork. You don't just see each other day in, day out, every day. I don't know, over time, will you get bored? I'm not sure. Some people may, yeah, some people know. Let me just give you an example. Every day when my husband comes home and the kid and our children calls him, Papa! You know, I can see the joy in my husband's face. That kind of joy, that kind of sparks in his face, in his eyes. It's really money can't buy. Money can't buy. And in the morning, my son will come up to my room and sometimes my helper will also bring up my second child, which is my, my daughter. She's almost one year old next month. So, and at the time of this video recording. So, it's so heartwarming when your kid jumps out on your bed and just give you a hug and it feels so sweet. It's just so much love and you feel so much happiness and joy. You know all these things money can't buy. A lot of people who want to have kids, they have problems having kids. So if you have the ability to have kids, give it a good thought to have one or not, right? Because your life will really be very different when you have a little human being around in your life. Uh, yes. It, it takes a lot of effort and time. I mean, some peers told me that I cherish my freedom more. I want to go travel whenever I can. I want to go out whenever I can. Let me tell you something. Do you know that even when I have two kids now, me and my husband, we can go out anytime we want. We can go travel anytime we want. Why we can do that and why some parents can't? It's very simple. You need to have support. You need to have some help, of course. So. Some people are lucky, they have their parents or in-laws to help them out with their kids, to help take care. For me and my husband, what we did was we didn't want to rely too much on our parents or trouble them too much. So what we did was we hired domestic helpers. We have stay-in helpers. We have two actually. And it was a decision to hire a second one just before my second daughter was born because we felt that every Every Sunday at least, we want to have at least one helper around so that they can take turn, rotate to go on their off days on Sundays. But yet, we still have some help around in the household on every, every day. So that's why we came to a decision to hire two domestic helpers. And I mean, not every household can, can do that or some may find that it infringes their privacy. But I can tell you, don't let the privacy thing void you or blind you into not getting help because you know now to me is my helpers are like part of the family i'm so comfortable with them they're very comfortable with me and what is this privacy thing it, it's really nothing so i cherish the help and support that my domestic helper can give me as compared to privacy all right so i can have my privacy in my room and my helpers in their own room so yeah it's not a problem at all so anyway back to the parent or not topic so give this a very good thought especially if you are a woman because our life span to have to bear a children is very limited the older you give birth to a child the longer it takes for you to recover from it to recover from the postpartum so do it not too old when you want to give birth but if let's say touch wood, you have issues giving birth consider alternatives seek some medical help or you know whatever give it a good thought whether you want to be a parent or not all right so if i could turn back time whether i want to have a kid or not to me i certainly would and also you know another benefit of having kids is that for me i see that it actually bonds a couple together it becomes like a complete family i do see some peers and individuals they have issues with their spouse after they have kids but 
to me, is it is the way that they manage this thing. A lot of women tend to put their children as priority number one over their husband once they have kids. And I can tell you for sure, this is a recipe for trouble. Never, never do that. Because remember, at the end of your life, when your kids grow up, they have their own families. They, they have their own family. But the person that's going to be with you throughout the last few stage of your life is your life partner. See, back again, we are back at the life partner thing again. That's why it's so important to choose a correct life partner. So always place priority on your spouse, even if you have a kid, right? So this was the topic that me and my husband spoke about before we got married as well. We told each other that we'll learn from the mistakes of our other peers or individuals that we should never ever put each other as secondary. No, it should always be first priority before the kids come next. So remember this point, if you want to be a parent, always put your spouse as priority first, then your kid. Because this only with a healthy relationship with your life partner, with your spouse, only then can you provide fully for your kid, for your child. So I will share with you what are the remaining major decisions that will make or break your life in part 3 of this series. So do stay tuned and check out the description below as I will share with you what is the link to part 3 of the video once it's ready to be published. And in the meantime, take care and I'll see you in my next one.